Hi, um, the topic of uh, the today's video is the five most common mistakes that entrepreneurs make in their pitch decks. My name is Victoria Yampolsky and I run the Startup Station. In the time that I've had my company, I have looked at countless presentations and I can say with all of confidence that most of them exhibit similar problems. Mistake number one is how you present your market size. And here I'd like to make three points. First, make sure you differentiate between the US market size and the global market size. Or if you're an entrepreneur from another country, the market size for your home country and the global market size. Second, make sure you specify growth rates. It's very important to indicate whether the market is growing, growing rapidly or contracting because this indicates the revenue potential for your business overall. And three, try to make sure that you are addressing a billion dollar market. If the immediate addressable market for your revenue stream is very small, consider other revenue streams and determine the market size for those streams as well, with the hope that when you add all of the addressable markets together, you're going to be addressing a billion dollar market. Mistake number two, no go to market strategy. Now, it's very common for startups to specify if they have traction or not with their product, if they have existing customers to present testimonials, etc. However, your go-to-market strategy is a way for you to explain to investors how you're going to achieve the revenue goals that you're specifying in your financial summary slides. And if you don't have a strategy to achieve those goals, guess what? Your revenue goals then become wishful thinking and not something that you can really depend. One of the largest risks that all startups face is the execution risk. And when you think through your go-to-market strategy, this is exactly your risk mitigation tool for making that risk go down, which of course makes you more attractive for investors. Mistake number three, not thinking through your long-term strategy. Now, all startups have a business model. They have at least one way in which they're going to make money, and this is what they usually focus on. However, remember that investors like to see your revenue potential, and it's the long-term strategy that really addresses that wish and positions you in a more attractive light than other startups. So a long-term strategy could refer to revenue streams that you will launch in year three, four, or even after. And there doesn't need to be a lot of quantitative data. It can just be qualitative assessment, but what it should show is the overall revenue growth potential for your business in addition to the wonderful business model that you already have. Mistake number four, not specifying your unit economics. Now, a lot of startups already have a financial summary slide where they display their revenue goals and their costs. They may even calculate some ratios such as margins, which indicate how efficiently you're going to run your business. But what they often lack are the underlying assumptions on which your the entire financial projection is built on, and that is your unit economics. It can be price, it can be customer breakdown, it can be subscription rate for a SaaS business, etc. These are the things that ultimately drive the model and significantly affect the final financial results. So it is very important not only to specify the outcome, but to also display the main inputs that drive that outcome. And mistake number five is spending too much time on the technical details of how your product works. Now, it is very important to describe 
the business rationale behind creating your product and to really explain how it's different from the other products available on the market. However, it is not as necessary to go into the nitty gritty details of how the product is designed because investors are more focused on how you're going to make money from the product. And if they need to ask you more information, in terms of the architecture or the specific implementation details, they can always do it in the Q&A. So don't make those mistakes, build amazing pitch decks and get funded faster. If you like this video, please share with your friends and colleagues and other startup groups. Please comment below and like. And for more information about how to build a great financial model, please check out classes two and four on the Startup Station's website. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.